Good morning, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. We're only several days removed from Gary Turner's epic and historic premiere season of Golden Bachelor. And boy, did he not have a roadmap going into this. And Leslie's going to share her side of the story on Bachelor Happy Hour podcast. She, of course, was the runner-up who had the world promised for her and then ripped out of her heart. Now Gary's happy. He's moving on quickly with a January 4th wedding around the corner corner at La Quinta Resorts in Palm Springs, but Leslie spills the off-camera lies, or at least mistruths, that she was told. Follow me on Instagram at dneals, patreon.com slash daveneal for behind-the-scenes bonus content. On today's Patreon, I'm going to be discussing some of the fallout that came from my conversation with Law Talk with Mike after after the Clayton Eckert and Jane Doe scandal continued to be exposed. That's right. Uh, emails were sent immediately after that episode demanding uh, certain things be removed from the internet. I'll have all of that insider tea on patreon.com slash Dave Neal. Morning and afternoon, we have Bachelor Rush Hour, the hit podcast. If you want some Christmas spirit filled, you're going to get it on this morning's Bachelor Rush Hour. We have uh, pro football players singing Christmas music and so much more. It's a good chat. All right, let's get into it. Golden Bachelor runner-up Leslie claims Gary Turner made future plans with her off camera. Oh, okay. I'm all about listening to that, so we're going to get into that story right now. Don't forget, this morning's uh, featured moms of the day are Martina in Spokane, Washington, and Haley in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, They share their stories and what they've got going on with their lives and why they could use a helping hand. If you want to read everybody's story, it's on a Google document. Link in the description below. But we're trying to help out all of the the moms here that are in need. So thanks in advance for all of your generosity. All right, let's jump into it. So Gary Turner had uh, his Bachelor Happy Hour finally aired with Teresa, his winner, uh, in on the YouTube channel Bachelor Happy Hour. But uh, they have yet to air the video of Leslie's conversation. Why haven't they aired it? I don't know. I mean, if this if this were my channel, I'd want the video up as soon as I want the audio. Either way, they de- they ju- they they cut it into two parts. Why did they do that? A money grab, just a way to make more money. Rather than have a 48-minute episode, they said, how about two 24-minute episodes? And we're like, how about no? Anyway, let's play the first eight or so minutes of this clip where Leslie shares her side. Have a listen, everybody. That wasn't just from, like, putting pieces together. There were things being said yeah. For sure. that were very clear and direct that yeah. probably led you to believe that and led the viewers to believe right. that, right? Totally, yeah. So I guess, yeah, you want to explain, just explain that that date portion first, like how, how everything went yeah. and how you really felt. And were you also aware, like, that he could be saying these same things to Teresa? So the... Afternoon date, of course, scaling down the waterfall was scary. And, um, you know, it was great at the same time. Obviously, we had a wonderful time together and we bonded. And I really felt even more for Gary because he had my back, although he could have taken the waterfall side. But that's a moot point now. (laughs) Wait, I can't let you keep going. Right, this is in reference to the fact that they were scaling down the side of her waterfall and Gary had Leslie on the side that was splashing and getting more water. And hey, was it Gary's decision or production? Who knows? But either way. Like, yeah. Because we said that. I was like, <laughs> this poor woman yeah. is like so scared and she's also getting whacked in the face. No, by this it, was, it was bad. And then he actually said when we got down, I should have been on that side. I'm like, yeah, thank. Yeah. Um, Thanks for stepping up. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, you had my back kind of. <laughs> but no. It, but besides that, we had a wonderful time. We, you know, I we felt cl- I felt like we got closer Mm -hmm. and then we had our dinner and he you know kind of squashed my fears in Gary fashion and told me everything was going to be okay and you know all that stuff and we had fun we just laughed a lot together so for me that was really important because I love to laugh and I love to make people laugh so I was really we just were in sync that way Mm -hmm. and um and then I I said this last night. Everybody knows what he said on camera, but it was off camera in our overnight that only him and I know what was said. And, um, you know, I don't want to say everything he said, but it was 
a hundred percent certainty when I woke up the next morning that I whoa, was going to be whoa, dead. Whoa, 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 whoa! So, All right, so like, we have Leslie claiming it was one hundred percent certainty that she was being chosen. So you know, look, hey, here's the deal, right? In in the modern era of Bachelor Bachelorette, the lead is usually someone who has already been through the fantasy suites as the recipient, so they know how to act. Gary's flying blind, and let me tell you this, I'm sure the Bachelor producers knew that when they signed him up for it. It's almost like why Clayton was chosen for Bachelor, because he hadn't been through the fantasy suite process himself. So it makes you wonder, are they, are they actually... Same thing with Katie Thurston. Are they trying to choose people that haven't been through that finale sort of rigmarole because they don't understand how how uh, you know how toxic it can all be and with Clayton as an example he really made the fantasy suites a night to remember and for more ways than one uh, and now Gary of course is being uh, f- you know being found out to be at, at the very least a people pleaser which I don't blame him he, he sold them both on the world and the vision and then he changed his mind at the last second hey what can you do you know? All right, let's continue this right now and hear it, what it, it came out that say. Teresa said that he basically proposed to her in the fantasy. Yeah, I didn't see that last night. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, essentially, did, did he do that with you? Proposed to me. He made plans with me uh, for future. Um, he said. He made plans with you for the future? Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like save the date. Um, this is what we're going to do. I can't wait for us. To uh, save days. the date. You know, we'll be done with this. Um, be together, start our life. Did he say, will you marry me in there? No, but he all but said that. I mean, I would have been happy with just, I love you, but he took it to a different level. Yeah. And when he woke up, we woke up the next morning and he left. He turned around three times and blew me kisses. He didn't want to leave. Um, that's why I wasn't worried that he was going on a date. I was just knew that he had to get through the motions of it. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, I was a hundred percent sure that I was it. And I mean, he didn't lead me. He didn't say I have such a hard decision to make. I don't, you know, nothing like that. So I- look, I get it. I get she feels bad. This is just the name of the game, you know. It's it's how you feel in the moment. And Gary's, and I'm sure being coached. I'm not. I'm look. I'm not pimping for Gary here. I'm sure he's being coached to just say like pursue each relationship to its fullest, and then make your decision after that. And of course, Leslie was first in the fantasy suites. She thought she had it in the bag, and you know, come to find out, Teresa and him, they kind of took it to that next level. What can I you do? I just didn't. Because what we saw a lot of was him saying multiple times throughout the season, like, you're my girl, Mm -hmm. or I think you're the one. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like going into the fantasy suites, the relationship and the commitment to one another was taken even further than that. Yes. How did that feel? You know, you're off camera. You don't really know what's going to happen when you go in the fantasy suites. You don't know what he's going to say. You don't know what the conversation is going to be like. For all you know, you're going to go in and he's going to be, you know, say what you said. Like, I have a really tough decision to make. Yeah. How did that feel for you being in there, hearing all of these things? It must have been such a relief. Well, it was a relief. I was excited. And I, I mean, we literally were so comfortable with each other the minute we got in there and the door closed. We brushed our teeth together. We, I mean, it wasn't like, oh, what are we doing now? You know, yeah. we talked for hours and, you know, there was so much I wanted to tell him about me and I, he wanted to tell me about him. And, um, so it was great. I mean, I felt closer to him. Like <laughs> this is it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and this is just the general, like I said before, you got to pursue this like you're running into a brick wall. It w- If he was to choose Leslie, this would have been a good part of their story. But you have to pursue these relationships in this made up sort of polygamist uh, sister wives world that they live in. You got to pursue these relationships assuming they're going to work out and only one person is not going to be scorned at the end of the day. But I don't blame Leslie for wanting to share her side. It almost sounds like, and I understand, she probably feels a little stupid because she was like so surprised at how it all went down. And she has every right to feel that way. This is I hate to say it. This is how the show works. This is how the cookie crumbles. You know? 
This so it was really nice because I thought, okay, that's why I went and picked out this dress and why I wrote our vows or my vows and I, because I was 100% certain. Yeah. And there was things he said to me Tell us. in the overnight that alluded to his overnight with Teresa is not going to be the same. Whoa. Yeah, I was going to ask you. So you knew that Teresa was no. going next. Mm-hmm. Okay. After feeling pretty confident, was there a part of you that was still like, okay, but Teresa hasn't had this time. Maybe something happens in there where then he leans her way. You know, Joe, I really didn't. And I said last night, I, I'm, I don't go through life going, I got this. I got this. Yeah. You know, I go through life going, I might have it. And when I get it, I'll say I got it, you know, or Basically, I just cautiously optimistic. I'm never getting ahead of myself. I, I don't assume. And I never assumed this whole journey. I was just like, I'm going to stay in my lane. I'm going to just focus on what I have with Gary. I don't want to hear the chatter. I don't want to, you know, all that stuff. And, um, yeah, so I, I, I kind of left that morning. I mean, Confident, yeah. So yeah. good. So let's, let, I'm going to give you a hypothetical here mm-hmm. let's say you're the golden bachelorette mm-hmm. Ooh, and it's down question. the fantasy uh sweet nights you're basically in love with two men mm-hmm. how do you handle it differently i for sure would never tell anyone i love them until i'm on that platform with them and i know it i i'm i'm just wouldn't do that how um, about how yeah. about when they s- i i agree with you mm-hmm. and i feel like that's what i would do as well but if they say to you, I love you and you feel that, do you, do you think you can hold that back? Yeah. Okay. I, okay. I, because I just don't want to hurt. I would never want to hurt anyone. The- All right. So there it is. So Leslie says, because she has been put through the ringer in the fantasy suite, she wouldn't act that way to the next person. And again, when we had Clayton as the bachelor and Rachel Recchia and Gabby were so sad and offended and, you know, uh, by all of that whole situation, then they realized when they were the bachelorettes, how hard it is. And, you know, you can try your best, but clearly Gary, I, I doubt the guys ever, ever watched the show. So he's, he, he was able to compartmentalize these two separate worlds he was living again uh am i am i am i being too generous to gary i'd love to know what you think uh will it change my opinion probably not but i'd still love to know what you think why would i love to know what you think well because it helps the algorithm i don't i don't really care what you think no i'm kidding uh please tell me what you guys think i'm gonna have more content coming your way and then don't forget i'll be live with some juicy tea on today's patreon patreon.com slash dave neal we'll be back right after this